mini bell pepper poppers. This is my way of updating a jalapeno popper. So I'm gonna make these with the baby bell peppers. They're kind of sweet. And the way I'm gonna add the heat is with this Fresno chili. So the heat is gonna go into the cream cheese and cheddar cheese filling. And then you're gonna get this sweetness from the baby bell peppers. So right down the middle, keeping the top on, that's how you're gonna eat them. So we're gonna take all the seeds out of the baby bells. And we're not taking out the seeds because they're spicy. We're just taking out the seeds because we want that creamy filling, not crunchy. So there's a couple things that need to be chopped into the filling. So we're gonna chop up this Fresno chili. So this Fresno is not quite as spicy as a jalapeno, a little bit sweeter. This is gonna go in the filling, which is going to have cream cheese, sharp cheddar cheese, and some bacon. So let me get a bowl and make the filling. We've got some cream cheese already softened. It's gonna make it much easier to mix together. Get the chili peppers in. And I like putting two different kinds of cheeses in. We got the creamy cream cheese and then the sharp cheddar. Let's chop up some bacon that I made earlier. I want them chopped up enough so that when I put this mixture into a pastry bag, I don't stop up the hole. I love the smokiness, the saltiness of bacon. Okay, this is our filling. Just need to mix it together. Add a little bit of milk. I think that should loosen it up just enough. Right now, I just wanna get all the cheese and the bacon and the pepper mixed together. Get a little salt and pepper in here. Let's get these mini baby bell pepper poppers stuffed with this creamy stuffing. But the way to do that is you're gonna put all of this in a pastry bag. And the easiest way to fill a pastry bag is to get yourself a smaller vase. And this is gonna help the pastry bag hold up. And if you don't have a pastry bag, you can use a plastic bag and just snip off the corner. Go ahead and get it in. Make sure you get all that filling in there. I'm gonna give the pan a little spray. That way it won't stick. And I like to spray over the sink all the time, otherwise it goes everywhere. So I'll grab the pastry bag, take the bag with the very big opening and really close it off. You wanna get as much of that filling down to the bottom as possible. Now it's time to give it a little snip snip. You want it big enough to make sure all the filling comes out but not too big that it goes everywhere. So you're gonna grab one of these and just get a little bit down the middle because what's gonna happen is once you get them in the oven, it's all gonna spread out and it will fill up as it melts. Filled up that yummy, cheesy filling. 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Oh yeah. Today's menu is a colorful explosion of flavor. Like just look at these baby bell pepper poppers. So cache e pepe is literally translated cheese and pepper. So that's what this pasta is made out of. We'll let that pasta cook until just al dente. Now we want to build our sauce. Let's get that pot started, getting it nice and hot. I'm gonna get some butter in there. We want four tablespoons. Um, I wanna toast some pepper in here. So we want two and a half teaspoons of freshly ground black pepper. I wish you could smell this. It smells so full and beautiful. While this is still warming up, I'm gonna grab the pasta, put it right to a pan next to it, okay. You really need some pasta water. And you can see how gorgeous this water is. All that is the pasta starch. So we're gonna grab a couple ladlefuls. You are gonna put this in very gently because you're putting hot water into hot butter. This is the base of your cache pepe sauce. Now I'm gonna add in some lemon flavor. So we'll get some zest in to get a lot of lemon flavor. The zest really comes in handy because it's got the intense lemon flavor in it. What I want along with the zest is also the juice. Okay. We're gonna get the pasta in here and get all the butter flavor, all the pepper flavor all over this pasta. And while it's heating up, we're gonna start layering in some cheeses. I've got pecorino, which is a, a softer cheese, but it's a little bit more sharp, and Parmesan. I like adding in Parmesan because it's got that nice salty flavor to it. And we're gonna use all this cheese. It's called cacio, cheese and pepper. And the cheese is gonna help thicken up the sauce as well. Pecorino, we're building all the flavors right now in the pot. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of chive. You guys, it smells so, so good. It's a beautiful thickness, I love it. Can you hear that? That's cheesy. I think it's time to have a little bite. 
This smells like the perfect combination of beautiful, subtle pepper aroma, cheesy look. Ooh, 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 ooh. I cannot wait to dig into this. A little more chive. I smell a little bit of lemon, a little more cheese in there, a little lemony cacio e pepe. Look at that. <gasps> See the cheesy? That's so good. It's so cheesy. And there's this very light, lemony flavor to it. These bars are so amazing. We're gonna start by melting the chocolate over a double boiler. Let's get a cup in here. And then a half stick of butter. And then to really amp up the peanut butter flavor, just a tablespoon of peanut butter. All right, I'm gonna need that later. It's really important to melt your chocolate in a bowl over boiling water. You can't put it directly in the pan because it will, it will scorch. This is the way you do it. So that's gonna melt, and while that does, let's get the bottom layer put together. 12 tablespoons of unsalted butter. Make sure your butter is melted first, because that's gonna be your liquid to really blend everything together. It's a cup each, peanut butter or any kind of nut butter, a cup of powdered sugar and graham cracker crumbs, and then a little bit of vanilla, just a teaspoon and then give that a big mix up. Look how easily this came together. So this goes right into a pan and you just pop it down, get to all four corners. It's so easy. Now we're gonna get that melted chocolate. As soon as I start stirring this, everything's gonna melt together. Yep, look at that. All right, this is beautifully melted, didn't take long. So just get the chocolate right in. I'm gonna just start making like a little pattern here with uh, little pretzel sticks on top for some crunch. And you can use any kind of pretzels that you like. I've made them with big pretzel rods. You can make them with the cute little pretzel shapes. Whatever you like. There. Mm. Okay, into the fridge for about an hour and a half till it cools and hardens. These bars are nice and chilled. So this is what's gonna make your life easy. And taking it out, look at that. Comes right out. Pull the aluminum foil off. There we go. Just want to cut it into pieces so that it fits right into the container. Want to give them multiple pieces. Oops. Oh, some came off. Uh oh. That's like childhood right there. Mmm! Food makes me so happy. This makes me so happy. I had to make disco fries. They're from New Jersey. Let me get this sprayed up. Okay, the fries won't stick now. So I'm gonna crisp up some fries in the oven and I really prefer to use frozen fries because I want the fries to be nice and crisp. And you want the nice, thick steak fries. You want a lot of surface area for the gravy and the cheese. I wanna make sure it's all one even layer. We wanna give the top a spray too so they get nice and crispy. Okay, a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. There we go, into the oven. So those are gonna go in at 425 for about 20 to 30 minutes. I am known in my household as the person they go to always to make the gravy. Not because I'm a brilliant gravy maker, but because they like to make fun of me. Because once, once in my life, I used <clears throat> powdered sugar instead of flour. And I have not heard the end of it. And I don't think that's fair. Let's get the pan heated up. Get a couple tablespoons of butter melted. So basically we're just gonna make a little roux, a thickener. Three tablespoons of flour. Disco fries. So how it got the name Disco Fries? Remember the 70s? For those of you that were alive in the 70s? Very big on disco. Everybody would go out dancing. When they closed down the clubs, everyone would go to diners and they would want something to eat and they would ask for fries covered in gravy and cheese. So that became Disco Fries. All right, I'm gonna get some seasoning in here. Just a half a teaspoon each. Paprika, garlic powder, and onion powder. Only some flavorful gravy. Now, time for some beef broth. Cup and a half, and the broth goes. So you wanna just try and get all the lumps and bumps out before we add the cream. And we're gonna get this up to a nice simmer so it really bubbles up. It's getting glossy and thicker. All right, I am going to add a little bit of cream. Just a couple tablespoons. This is really to make it nice and creamy. Okay, I'm gonna turn that down. That's gorgeous, and it's just gonna thicken up as it sits here. This, a little mozzarella cheese on those fries. Disco fries, we'll go dancing. 
Okay, this gravy is gorge. I think it's time for the cheese on the disco fries. Yes, they look nice and crispy. So it's time to get a little mozzarella on there. What we wanna do is melt all the cheese, get them nice and cheesy, and then we're gonna put them in little baskets and drizzle that gravy that I made earlier all over. And I've got some nice thickly grated mozzarella. You want cheesy, cheesy fries. It's sort of like nachos, but with fries. <laughs> okay, back in the oven. So what do you got there? Cheese covered fries. Nice. Because that's how we do fries in this house. Okay. I also made gravy to go on top of them. Oh, nice. Smells oh, good. Yeah, look at that. Gooey cheesy fries. You like cheesy fries, Enzo? Mm-hmm. Good. Ooh, that's a nice cheesy mm. one. Look at that, Enzo. Should that be yours? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Enzo, you wanna come over here and help me? I'm gonna put a little gravy on these. You can help me bring them to the table. They look delicious. They smell good. <laughs> and we got the gravy. Goes right over. Order up. Thank you, Enzo. You're welcome. Thanks, dude. Mmm. You don't All have right. to wait for me. All right, we won't. Mmm. Oh, that's just so decadent. Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna get started on the s'mores bars now, which is basically a big sheet pan full of delicious s'mores. And I'm gonna start with the graham cracker crust. So we got two sticks of butter. These have been softened to room temp. I'm gonna put those right in the mixer. And let me get my cup. I'm gonna cream this butter up with a cup of sugar. And this is light brown sugar. You gotta pack it in to get the right amount. I'm just gonna make a big old s'mores bar. So I'm gonna start with the crust at the bottom, which is graham cracker, and then put some chocolate in, then put some marshmallow cream, and then more chocolate, and then more graham cracker crust. Give it a little go. It's starting to cream away. And now I'm gonna add two eggs, one at a time. Now everything's incorporated together and it looks light and fluffy. This is beautiful. Just a couple teaspoons of vanilla extract, and you can eyeball it. Mmm, smells so good. Okay, that's really beautiful. It's really creamed up lovely. So now I'm gonna get to the dry ingredients. So we got some graham cracker crumbs because I really want that s'mores flavor and it all starts with graham crackers. So we're gonna get a couple cups. One and two. And then get some flour in here to really kind of bind it all together. There's two cups right there. Now we need some baking powder because that's gonna help it rise. Two teaspoons of that. One teaspoon of kosher salt. Then we just wanna get all the dry ingredients all mixed up together. So now we're at the part of baking where we don't wanna overmix. We wanna just incorporate the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. So I'm just gonna put half of the dry ingredients in first. And I'm putting it on slow because I don't want it all coming back at me. So here we go. And then the other half. And this is really a thick dough, like a cookie dough. Okay, this looks good. There we go. And I have a pan that's already been sprayed generously because as we know with s'mores, they're very, very sticky. We got a little parchment here and this is gonna help be able to pull it out when it cools. All right, so I wanna get half of this dough because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a s'more. So let's get the bottom part of the cracker in there. And the rest will go on the top, but I wanna smash this down so it's like a graham cracker. So I'm gonna get my hands nice and greasy. This is gonna be our friend as we build the s'more bars. and then start smashing. And you wanna get the whole bottom covered. I've only met Chase once. This was a long, long, long time ago before he was actually a firefighter. We do appreciate our firefighters because when these guys put their lives in danger every single day to help us, it's, they're just amazing. All right, you can see this is all smooshed down perfectly. So now it's ready for the next layer, which is the chocolate, my favorite part. So I've got full-size chocolate bars right here. And I'm just gonna lay them down. And when they go into the oven, they're gonna melt just like they do when you smush on a hot marshmallow by a campfire. 
I'm using milk chocolate bars. And you don't have to worry about filling the whole thing up. It's just gonna melt once it hits the heat of the oven. So what's next on a s'mores bar? Marshmallows. So we have this cream here, and now I'm gonna have to grease down my hands again because this stuff is sticky. So let's just get one hand greased down. That's a big marshmallow. <laughs> So I'm gonna use this whole container, how about that? This is a really big s'mores bar. I mean, go big or go home. If you're gonna make a s'mores bar, make a s'mores bar. So you know how s'mores get all sticky and kind of drip all over your hand? They don't, probably don't travel very well. These do, they travel really well. So just getting this all the way to the edges. Okie dokie, that looks good. Let's get this off so I can continue building the s'mores bars. Because the chocolate part is my favorite part of a s'mores bar, I'm gonna add a little bit more chocolate. So we got some chocolate chips. Just get a little bit, just spread, I don't know, a quarter cup. And then to add a fun other flavor, I have some peanut butter chips. We used to go camping a lot when I was a kid. So now we're gonna top the s'mores bars. I'm kind of like making little flat pancakes. And you don't have to cover all the way here. You wanna see the marshmallow and the chocolate kind of come up. This is perfect. It's gonna go into the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 minutes. <laughs> this looks so amazing. No campfire required. S'mores, just like that. Mmm, they smell delicious. They have cooled off. I can actually touch it. And this is why we have the parchment hanging out. So you can just easily pull the whole thing right out so it's much easier to slice up. Oh, <laughs> the way it gives. I'm gonna turn this around. Let's get these nice travel container. Fits nicely, there we go. Let's grab a bite for Valerie. Mmm, that's delicious. I love a sheet pan dinner, because you cook everything on one sheet pan and easy cleanup. I, I, I can't tell you how much I love this meal. <laughs> now, let's get started with this guy. So what we're gonna do is take off the paper skin on the outside. So we're gonna cut this into eight wedges. These are in four pieces, and they go under the sheet pan. Okay, we have these beautiful chicken thighs. Get some olive oil on here. I just wanna make sure the chicken and none of the veggies stick. I'm gonna get the chicken on the pan and coat it with olive oil and then season with some salt. A Little bit all everywhere. And you know what? Don't forget those onions. Get some in there too. And then some pepper. Okie doke. Little paprika. That's gonna add a nice little smoky flavor to it. Okay, to top it all off, I really want this to be kind of on the tangy side and sherry vinegar is super tangy. Get about a quarter cup in there and just do it all around the chicken. You just finished putting all that great seasoning on the chicken so you don't wanna wipe it off with the vinegar. This is gonna end up being in the oven at 450 degrees, all told about 35, 40 minutes, but only go in in the beginning for 15 minutes because then I'm gonna add some tomatoes and some garlic and some Castel Beltrano olives. But you don't wanna put those in too early because they might burn. And now this goes into the oven. This looks beautiful. All right, you guys, pause up for who wants to spend a nice lazy afternoon, not in the kitchen cooking all day, but really relaxing with your cats. That's me. These chicken thighs are halfway through their cooking process. I've got some Castel Veltrano olives, which I absolutely love. And then we have some multicolored tomatoes, and these are gonna go onto the sheet pan and they're gonna roast, but I wanna also get some garlic and some rosemary in there. Now I'm gonna slice the garlic and then some rosemary. Okay, let's bring this up and get some olive oil in here and some salt and pepper. First the olive oil, so the salt and pepper sticks. A little salt. Not too much, those olives already have a lot of salt in them. And then some pepper. Okay, 
Now just pour this guy right onto your sheet pan. Just get them all around so they get roasted evenly. There we go. And then get it right back into the oven for about 20 minutes, depending on how thick your thighs are. Come in. Hello. Hi, how are you? I have got to get the chicken out of the oven, so give me a chance to it do that. It smells so good. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. We totally need smell-o-vision. <sighs> Careful, hot coming through. I can get closer. Mm -mm. Wow. I've never cooked with those olives. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're the best olives to roast. They taste so amazing. OK. There we go. Now let's get all of this yumminess. I love the way everything has blistered beautifully while it's been roasting. And one pan cooking. Mm-hmm. But just the final touch. Just a little bit of parsley. Oh, nice. Adds a perfect amount of freshness. A love cake is regular cake mix and then a layer of ricotta and mascarpone. And they switch places in the oven because mascarpone is a lot heavier. And then you cover it with strawberry pudding frosting. Now I'm gonna get started on my base, which is strawberry cake mix. This particular cake needs three eggs. That's one, two, no shell. Did it, no shells. Got my cup of water and a half a cup of veg oil. This love cake has become so famous in our house that now the children choose which flavor they want for their birthday. And they all love a different flavor. Now, I know it might look silly. Here I am mixing a cake in a bowl, and I've got my mixer right here. Cakes are so easy to mix up. You don't have to have a mixer. Just want to make sure the egg is all broken up in there. I like to use a glass pan, because then I can see the layers as they change. Now I'm just going to get my pan and my spray. And I like to spray my nonstick spray in my pans in my sink. Less mess. There, didn't spray it everywhere. It goes right in. Oh, it smells so good. Like a field of strawberries. OK, first layer done. On to the second layer. We're going to start by getting my ricotta in there. The whole carton goes in. And then part of this mascarpone, mascarpone, uh, I'm always mispronouncing Italian words. I think it's part of my charm. I'm going to use a little bit of this and then save some for my frosting. My four eggs, here we go again. Hey, pretty good. I should have a cooking show. <laughs> All four go in. Teaspoon of vanilla, and then three quarters of a cup of sugar. This is a cake, it's gotta be really sweet. So all this goes in, and you mix it right up until it blends all together. Starting to smell like love in here. I wanna be careful to get all this on top of my pink without going through. This filling switches places in the oven and infuses the batter with all that flavor as it sinks to the bottom. Mm. And it's ready to go in the oven at 350 for about an hour until a toothpick comes out clean. My frosting starts with strawberry instant pudding. Goes right into my bowl. The rest of my mascarpone that I used earlier goes right into the bowl and just one cup of milk for the liquid. But you can already see the pink starting to happen. The strawberry pudding and the mascarpone are gonna help thicken this up and make it a beautiful frosting. Whip up. Oh, look at it, it's turning beautiful. Gorge. All right, pull this over and get my strawberry love cake. Mm. Mm. You can see how part of it didn't flip, but if you want to look at the bottom, it kind of marbleizes in there, and it's actually prettier than just two layers. Put the frosting right on there. This really is my favorite cake in the world because you can make it chocolate, you can make it strawberry, you can make it lemon. Get every inch covered. Isn't that pretty? Look! The layers are so gorgeous. No churn lemon ice cream with raspberry swirls. 
It's so easy. Guys, all it is is sweetened condensed milk, some whipping cream, and whatever kind of flavor you want to put in it. So I want lemon and raspberry because they both go so well together, and you know how much I love lemon. Lemon reminds me of the Mediterranean, and some raspberry swirls make it look really pretty. To get the raspberry swirls, we're gonna need to make a coulis, which is a fancy way of saying we're gonna make some raspberry sauce. One teaspoon of sugar, a few tablespoons of water, and then we're gonna get this heated up, and as the raspberries break up, all of that pectin that's in those berries and in the seeds is gonna start to release, make this beautiful thick sauce. We just want these guys to mix up. You can see these guys starting to break down. You wanna help them out with a wooden spoon. Just give them a little crush crush. Now, we don't want any seeds in our raspberry swirl, so what we're gonna do is once this comes to a really beautiful thick sauce, we're gonna put it through a strainer and get all the seeds out. So this looks really nice. You can smell all that raspberry, tense smell. So what we're gonna do, turn the heat off, I'm gonna grab a strainer, and we're gonna get all of the raspberries that have been macerated, broken down. This is the easy part. All you gotta do is start pushing it through the sieve. You can see all the liquid coming out and none of the seeds. I believe we got as much as we're gonna get out of here. And while this cools, we can get the base put together. So I've got a nice big bowl here sweetened condensed milk. I always have sweetened condensed milk in my pantry. It's very helpful. I'm gonna grab some lemons. I'm gonna zest away. When you are zesting, please be careful not to get the pith. You want all the beautiful oils and the intense flavor to come just from the skin. Look at all that zest. It's not too much, I promise. And we'll get a little lemon juice in there, just about a tablespoon. That's a juicy lemon. So just give this a quick stir, get all the lemon juice and the lemon zest into the sweetened condensed milk. There we go, put that to the side, and then I'll go to the fridge to get the whipping cream. It's always easier to whip up cream the colder it is. So I've been keeping it in the fridge, ready to go, and start on slow so you don't get cream all over you, and then slowly bring it up. We're gonna look for some beautiful, nice, fluffy peaks. You can actually watch it firm up in real time. You can see it start to hold its shape. See how it's slowly falling in on itself? It's ready. That's beautiful. So now we're gonna pull our little lemon mixture up and take our fluffy whipped cream and put it into the lemon mixture, but just kind of fold it in. All right, this is all mixed together. So we're gonna get a loaf pan. This is to go on top, a little parchment paper. So we're just gonna get half in here because I really want those swirls to go all through the ice cream. Get your coolie that's cooled now, a cooled coolie. Just swirl that in there. And save a little for the top. Grab yourself a little stick. You can use a chopstick, you can use an offset. You want to see the swirls. There we go. And then put the rest in, goes right on top. And then the rest of the swirls go in. All of this is gonna thicken up in the freezer and you've got no churn ice cream. Swirl again, goes into the freezer for about four hours, ready to eat. The reveal, the big reveal. Look at how beautiful it is. It looks so luscious and creamy. So let's try it. This is the most magical thing to me. No churn ice cream. Look at that, it's so pretty. I'm gonna have so much fun experimenting with flavors. That is so great. Ice cream. So creamy. Oh, I just tasted a little chunk of lemon zest. I love that. We've got six beautiful chicken thighs. There's no skin, but the bone is in. Because there's no skin on here, I'm gonna cover these guys in some flour for a couple reasons. I want there to be a nice kind of crust. I also wanna develop a nice thick sauce. So as these guys cook, the flour will fall off into the pan and that will flavor the sauce plus help thicken it. So what we're doing is we're gonna build a lot of flavor in this cacciatore. We start by searing the chicken and then we take the chicken out. Then we start adding in all kinds of like onions and garlic, red bell peppers and some mushrooms, all classic cacciatore ingredients. And it's just gonna braise in tomato sauce on the back burner. This was one of my favorite dishes that my mom would make. It's comfort food. It's the best home-cooked meal. We'll get a nice sear on these thighs. I'm also gonna add a little more S&P to this side. So as these guys saute away, I'm gonna start prepping the veggies. The first things that are gonna go in after the chicken comes out are onion and garlic. 
I'm gonna get to the garlic. So we need about four cloves. These are nice big ones. Now let's slice these guys up. I bet it's time to turn the meat. Look at these guys. Looks like there's skin on it. It's also giving me some beautiful brown bits in there that we can go after later with some wine, which is another typical ingredient in cacciatore. I've got a beautiful red bell pepper. And we'll slice this up thinly too so we can see it. Now it's time for the cremini mushrooms. These are gorgeous. So we'll just give them a nice slice the mushrooms really give it this beautiful, earthy, wonderful flavor. So it's probably time to take these guys off so I can really start developing the flavors in the tomato sauce. And even if these guys aren't cooked all the way through yet, they're just seared on either side, don't worry. They're gonna cook for another 25 minutes once they get nestled into the tomato sauce. So first thing that goes in, we got this beautiful hot oil. Let's get the onions softened. Okay, now let's put the mushrooms in. So these are really starting to soften up beautifully, and there's enough of a mound of veggies here that I can throw the garlic in, because garlic does burn really easily. And now soften up the red bell pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to the veggie mixture. Really good to salt as you go. Okay, there are still some beautiful brown bits on the bottom. I think it's time for some wine. A half a cup. So now what we're gonna do is deglaze the pan. Get all of those yummy brown bits into the sauce that we're building. All of this alcohol is gonna burn right off. It's just gonna add a lovely bit of flavor. And while this cooks down, I'll chop up the herbs. I wanna get a little rosemary and a little oregano in here. All fresh herbs. There we go. And just get the knife in there and chop them all up. All right, that looks gorgeous. All the herbs go right in, stir that up. Now it's time to add the tomatoes. So I've got a whole can of crushed tomatoes. Just get the whole thing in. Now before I get this mixed in, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt and pepper. We'll mix that in. I wanna make sure every veggie is covered with tomato. So my favorite ingredient goes in now, the black olives. So get them in there. And then to add a little bit more brininess, we got some capers, a couple tablespoons, and then we're gonna nestle that chicken back in here. This is gonna flavor up the chicken too. And the chicken is then gonna flavor up the tomato sauce. Just get it all in. Turn the back burner on, front burner off. Let's cover it up onto the back burner. I'm here with Cassie and Colton. I've made them a nice home-cooked meal that my mama would always make for me when I'd come home to visit. You guys have been on the road, and I think when you've been on the road, you need a home-cooked meal. Yes. So I have made you some chicken cacciatore, which is one of my mom's oh, dishes. Oh, so good. It's chicken and tomato sauce. I'm gonna grab some basil. We can put some right over the chicken. I love basil. Me too. Smell how fresh yeah. that smells. Mm -hmm. It's a grilled cheese and it's a hamburger. And it's got caramelized onions, cheese. It's got toasty bread. Because the onions take a little while to caramelize, I'm gonna get started on that. You see these little ridges in here? That's where we're gonna slice it. So turn it around and start slicing. Nice and thin. You really want these onions to melt down and caramelize. And when it starts to get too wobbly, just turn it over. There you go. So this looks like a lot of onion, but it's gonna cook down. You know how onions shrink and get caramelized? They're beautiful. Okay, let's get this pan. I wanna get flavor in there, so I'm gonna put butter. But I don't want it to burn, so I'm gonna add in some olive oil. Tablespoon. Let's get those onions in. This is probably gonna take about 25 minutes because you really wanna do this low and slow. You don't wanna burn your onions. Let's get a little salt in here. I'm gonna put them on the back burner. Just gonna let those guys go. Check on them once in a while while I build the burger. A nice cast iron. That's gonna give me a nice crust on the burger. Just like a little over a pound of 80-20 ground beef. Nice amount of fat in there. A lot of flavor in that fat. A couple tablespoons of ketchup for some tang. A couple teaspoons of Worcestershire. A little salt and pepper. And a little bit of onion powder. Time to get in there. This is where you start to play with your food and it's the fun part about cooking. I also don't want to over mix this. I don't want to toughen up the meat. So I'm gonna make this the shape and the size of rye bread because I want the burger to hit every corner and have a perfect bite from each bite of the sandwich. Now I want them to be a little bit bigger than the bread because hamburger naturally shrinks when it's cooking. I'm making them a little bit thinner than a regular hamburger because I don't want you to have to really open wide and take a bite. It's just gotta be like a grilled cheese, but with a hamburger in it. All the burgers are ready to go. I'm gonna wash my hands. 
All right, I'm gonna give these onions a quick stir. Okay, those look beautiful. Get a little butter into the cast iron to cook the burger. Get the heat on. So I just need to cook three of them. Wash my hands again. They're just begging for a little salt and pepper. So I'm gonna put a little tiny bit on there. You could do this way ahead. You could even do it, you know, the day before. Put everything in the fridge, it's ready to go. Let's look at these onions again. These are browning up so beautifully. They're gonna be gorgeously caramelized. I'm very happy. The natural sugar that's in the onion is hitting the heat and caramelizing the onions. And then these guys won't take long. Oh, that looks beautiful. Gorge. And let those crisp up on the other side. So I'm just gonna continue to let these guys cook. It's time to get the melt in the patty melt. We have our onions and our patties that we made earlier. Now let's make them into the patty melt. So I'm gonna get this pan nice and hot. I'm gonna get my bread. Lovely rye bread. I love rye bread. It might be my favorite bread, and it, it makes the classic patty melt. So we just need six slices. So I wanna get a little butter on each slice of bread. And then where the butter is, is where I'm gonna lay the bread down on the hot griddle. Griddle up. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Okie dokie. Now on these slices of bread, first goes some cheese. I got some beautiful Swiss cheese here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I want it to really drip over. So we're gonna get one big slice in there. And the Swiss cheese, that's classic. Classic patty melt. Then the patty goes on. And then these gorgeous onions we made earlier. Just slather them. One more slice of cheese. There, now let's get the top on. Let me get a little bit of butter on the top of each slice of bread. All right, let's turn it over, see what happens. Yes, smush it down. And one, and two, there. And then smush it down. 